welcome to the Nerd Party. Scully? Yes? Marry me. I love you and I like you. I love you and I like you. I love that woman. I love her more than sharks love blood. I love you. You don't. Hello, I'm Tristan Riddell. And I'm the girl. And this is Nerd Nuptial episode 127. If this is your first time listening, we are a married couple looking at life through a nerdy lens. How are you doing today? Well, it is a lazy Sunday, so I'm great. It is a fantastically lazy Sunday. We spend a good amount of it in bed. Yeah, and which even, makes a really good Sunday. I think that's that's how you spend Sunday. <laughs> And uh, we went to the mall with the with the kitty with the kiddo, and uh, it was uh, we got to watch some Great British Bake Off or whatever it's, <laughs> is that what it's called Baking Show Baking Show Yeah, you you turned me on to that pretty hard. I did. Yeah, I won that one. <laughs> <laughs> Although now you've like stolen my show that I watch while like the baby naps during the day. You keep doing this to me. I swear. Like I always like try to find something that you don't want to watch so that I can watch it by myself. And you always end up like coming in and watching it and then deciding like, no, don't watch that without me. I want to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sorry, but I just have such great taste <laughs> you, as you tell our listeners often. I do. I do. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have asked this question before to the listeners, but I want to do it again just in case because you guys, um, because this is a show about being married, uh, I want to ask you guys, what's a show that you watch on your own? Like, what's a show that yeah, you have that question. is just yours? That because um, longtime listeners know that we watch everything together, almost everything. Mm-hmm. But if you're out with your friends or um, out doing something, I have something that I go to to watch. And mm-hmm. same with you. Yeah. So we want to know what you guys watch on your own that you yeah. don't feel the need. And do you like having something that's all your own? Mm-hmm. Or is it kind of one of those things where you're like, well, I wish that my, you know, significant other would watch it with me. Like Star Trek. <laughs> right. But, but uh, like, no, I have to watch it by myself. Or is it sometimes like, oh, no, I really do enjoy watching something by myself and it's only me. Yeah. yeah. Let us know. What you can do is you can go to the nerdparty.com slash contact. Select Nerd Nuptial from the drop down menu. Fill out the form. It'll send us an email. You can also message us, us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can find us um, at join Nerd Party on Twitter and all the other places. You just search the Nerd Party. Yeah. You can also find me personally on Twitter at the Insane Robin. Now, uh, today... As uh, some of you know, uh, this was last week, but it's kind of like a long time celebration, is the 80th anniversary of Batman. Which is very important to this nerd nuptial. (laughs) Yeah, it's very important (laughs) to this marriage, to this household. That's right. (laughs) And hopefully to this two-year-old baby that we have someday. Someday. Because she has Batman pajamas. She does, but she prefers her Spider-Man ones. Why did you have to bring that up? (laughs) Why did you feel the She's need? She's her own person, and that's okay. That's okay. That's well, I'm, you know, <laughs> this is the 80th anniversary of Batman, and you're just like, yeah, but Spider Man's cool. <laughs> no, I'm I'm <laughs> saying that Ripley thinks that Spider Man's cool. <laughs> she knows that Daddy loves Batman. She understands that. Yeah. <laughs> and but, Mommy. <laughs> but yes, yes, I was going to say it's not just it's no. not just me. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I married you is because oh, really? you're, you're hardcore into Batman, just like I am. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, so like yes, there's there's a there's a lot of events going on. Like DC streaming had uh, an event where you could watch every single thing that Batman was in for free on one day. I think it was like March 29th they did that. Uh, That'd be very difficult to get that all in in one day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was the goal to okay. watch it all in one day, but you had access to it. Okay, well that's all cool. in one day. Yeah. And then like there's there's anniversary editions of the comics coming out and. Um, and what was really great, and what I and you, <laughs> and hopefully a big chunk of the world was excited about, <laughs> was the first trailer for Joker. Yes, the movie. Yes, came out. It dropped. I mean, we've been excited about this since they basically like just did a little tease tester. It was like a test. 
even even right? yeah it was like it was yeah. a it was a camera test it was a right. costume test but like, actually you and i were even excited about this well before oh yeah they they had any kind of imagery just when they were talking about it because they were like there was a rumor that scorsese was going to be involved and that joaquin phoenix was going to be joker and so we're like uh hell yeah. yes yeah <laughs> actually no originally it was like leonardo caprio or something was going to be joker and scorsese was involved but that was just a rumor and it turned out to be walking phoenix and mm-hmm. it was going to be inspired by uh, early scorsese work right right uh which makes both of us tingle it... <laughs> in all the right places <laughs> it's too much information <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um every time i basically walk away from the television <laughs> tristan is watching this trailer like it's true <laughs> how many times do you think you've watched the trailer? whenever like you go to the kitchen get a snack yeah or you go and wash your hands or you go check on the <laughs> yeah. baby i'm like oh oh she's gone okay two. <laughs> i swear every time i'm like again really again it's so, if you haven't seen it yet <laughs> why are you wa- why are you listening to this podcast but <laughs> Pause for a second. Take the two minutes. Yeah. Watch the trailer. We're waiting. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's amazing. It's so. I think great. it basically, from our perspective, it is the right tone that we were hoping. Like it maintained the tone that we were hopefully expecting. Yes. 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 Because um, what yeah. can you really expect, ex- except for what you're told or what you right. what you imagine? You know. Exactly. But, I mean, the fact that it's a gritty, um, you know, it does feel like early Scorsese, what, it, they're, what they're going for. And it looks like a smaller film. Yes. It do, Like, there Little was no... big explosions. You didn't see any blue pillar in the sky of energy. Right. Oh, my gosh. No CGI whatsoever. Right. Um, Definitely a drama. Yes. Uh, a, th- know, a psychological thriller. Right, right. Yeah. Something exactly. revolving around criminality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly what it should be. Yeah. All about the the mind of this villain. And it's the exact opposite. And I'm not saying this as a criticism. It's the exact opposite of Suicide Squad. It's the exact opposite of Jared Leto's Joker in every way. And again, I'm not saying that as a criticism. Right. It's just an interpretation. It is, And it takes place in 1981. Mm-hmm. And um, which is interesting if you think about the timeline because... You have a young Bruce, like it's been reported that like in the trailer, you actually see a young Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Isn't he the kid he's through the, the bars? He's the kid yeah. through the through, through the, the gate great, yeah. that um, Joker Arthur Fleek, I think is mm-hmm. his name, is for, literally forcing a smile on Bruce's face. Like mm-hmm. he takes his fingers, his thumbs and is stretching his skin, right. which seems invasive. <laughs> yeah. Um, And so that makes you wonder like, oh, OK, so is this is like they were outside, maybe Bruce was at a cemetery. That's where everybody's mind is going. Like always sure, at a cemetery. Sure. Which he's, makes sense. He's I mean, visiting Martha and, and Thomas Wayne's mm-hmm. graves or something like that. Right. And then it makes you wonder, like, you know, like was I'm getting ahead of myself. Um <laughs> But it um like how do you how do you feel about that? How do you feel about a young Bruce Wayne being in this in this story? Is it forcing too much in, do you think? Is it necessary? I don't think that like any Batman at all would necessarily be necessary for this story, but because he does, he is, you know, the counterpart to mm-hmm. Joker. I think that you have to like hint at it, and if you're going to hint at it, then I'd rather it be that way than like a having, young Bruce Wayne than, yeah, a, than a Batman exactly, in the suit. or even like a you know an older Bruce Wayne who's, you know, making himself into Batman at the moment. Like, okay. I think I'd rather it be this than, I don't know. I get that. And see him I get that. older. Yeah, I think... But um, I don't even think I needed that. It's if, I, if they do do that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think, yes. I would... Be, what if, if a young Bruce Wayne was not in it or even... Yeah, like, if a young Bruce Wayne wasn't even born yet or not even in it yet... Or not even in it, I would have been fine. Mm-hmm. It's it, you know, it, it's a teaser trailer, so like, who knows? Right. How, like that might be all that there is. It's just like right. a walk on roll. Maybe that's all that there is. Who knows? But uh, I would have been fine without it. But I'm 100 percent okay with it. Some people are kind of like, eh, like, do we really need that? Like, are they trying to be Batman adjacent? Mm-hmm. You know, like, are they trying to force it in there? But then, like, I heard one person say, like. 
well, are they only, are they shoehorning Bruce in there just to make it a Gotham story? And then some people are like, does it even need to be a Gotham story? And I, I don't understand that argument because if it wasn't a Gotham story, then you have a man who goes insane and starts dressing up as a clown in an urban setting. No, it, it, <laughs> that's I mean, Joker. Joker is he exists in Gotham. Yeah. So, well, yeah. no, I think the argument is just like, does it have to be Joker? Like, oh, like do, does it? Which I don't understand that argument. It's just like this is the story they want to tell about Joker, right? And so that seems I, odd to me. I think it's an odd argument because we're so used to seeing people flying around in capes and big explosions and people like as human crocodiles running around in the sewers and everything like that right um i think that's why people are just like oh we'll just they should have just made it a psychological thriller of a of a guy going insane or something like that yeah but i think that like the dark knight is kind of proof that you know a lot of us including Mm -hmm. this nerd nuptial um really appreciates a gotham grounded in reality and clearly they are trying to like go for that audience that likes that ground and because that's i mean honestly that's a huge reason why i like batman Mm -hmm. like even though he's still a superhero personally i feel like he's more grounded in reality than like a superman or even like absolutely you know the avengers or something like that i mean not talking dc completely but i feel like that's the reason why I like Batman. Well, and that's the beauty of it is because, as everybody knows, that Batman has no superpowers. His superpowers is his intellect and his detective mind and his um, wealth and his wealth <laughs> and, his, and his gadgets. Right. And so that's why, like, some people, including myself, are, are talking about one big reason why Justice League didn't do well is because we've been conditioned for so long that these DC characters exist in a separate universe to themselves cinematically right Uh, like obviously there's the justice league comics and the much larger universe of the comics where everybody exists in the same universe yeah obviously but cinematically you have the superman franchise you have the batman Mm -hmm. franchise and um even outside of that like even within the dceu like when you have that standalone film of wonder woman she feels like she's alone yeah it's kind of true it's like It's not like they're talking about like, oh, well, you know, Batman's busy right now. So that's why Wonder Woman's working by herself. You know, it's, yes, it's, you know, you know what I'm saying. But like, I know, I know what you mean. It's one of those things where like, it's almost like even though they exist in the same world, they don't acknowledge the other people unless they are coming all together for the Justice League or like just at the end of the movie. (laughs) Like, hey, just so you remember, like, there are other people that can help out. And when you look at the Avengers, and the interconnected universe that Marvel has mm-hmm. that they've established cinematically. Right. Everything is connected. Everything is there. Everything is self-referential. Right. And I almost feel like they kind of like, I don't know, I kind of accept it a little bit more in that universe just because they've almost kind of established like, well, this issue isn't Avengers worthy. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, well, Ant-Man can handle this by himself and Captain America can handle this, but we'll maybe pull in this character to help him. Whereas when it comes to like an Avengers movie, you know, like the end of the world is coming <laughs> because you need all of them. Right. Whereas with the Justice League, I mean, yes. <sighs> okay, here's the thing though. Like, we just watched Aquaman for the first time. And yes, yes. we are very late to the party. Very late to the party. But we purposely were late to the party because we dislike Justice League that much. Mm-hmm. So, and we just were not huge, like, I don't know, fans of Aquaman. Like, just from... Just, Jason Momoa isn't... No, yeah, and, I, yeah. and just in general, like, Aquaman to me was always, like, the lamest, of course. I mean, that's just kind of, like, common knowledge, right? He was, like, the <laughs> lamest of the Justice League. Yes. So it's the Hawkeye of, <laughs> yeah. of the Justice League. <laughs> so we watched we watched it, and here's where again, j- like the DCU does it poorly, <laughs> is that technically it was going to be the end of everything as well in in oh, yeah. in Aquaman. Like yeah, they were gonna wage war, but on the, on the Superman humans, yeah. didn't come and help them. 
or that's why they made aquaman <laughs> superman essentially. right exactly and it was like so much cg uh, it was like all noise anyway but it's like they couldn't they they didn't do a good job of being like well this is only an aquaman issue yeah you know <sighs> yeah it's just yeah i just i love I miss smaller stories. Yeah. And I think that's why we're gravitating towards Joker. Yes. And we gravitate towards Batman Begins, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises because they're smaller stories. They either involve... Just, like, just take care of Gotham. Yeah, we, we've, yeah, we've talked about this so many <laughs> times before, but ba- Batman Begins was it like... Originally, it was just the Narrows, and then it was just like, oh, the water mains of the city are going to explode. Right. And then you have Dark Knight where it was like... The city was not going to explode. It was just two boatloads of of people. Mm-hmm. And then on the third one, that's when it was just like, okay, let's up the ante. Right. And the city is going to be destroyed. But that's it. But that's it. it. Like, and if you actually think about like how many actual explosions happened, yeah. it wasn't, it's not like we have these like CGI epic like battles where you're- Wizard battle. Yeah. It's not like that. So, Yes. Having something smaller where we just deal with the inside of Joker's mind mm-hmm. sounds fantastic. And I think this is the s- a sign. This is the first... Correct me if I'm wrong. This is the first DC superhero... Not super... Okay. DC Comics, which this is, I know is redundant. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the first DC Comics movie separate from the DCEU since The Dark Knight Rises. I think that's right. Because after the Dark Knight Rises, you had you had Man of Steel, and then that was the beginning of the DCEU. Yeah, you know, also yeah. known as the Snyderverse. Right, so you had Man right. Man of Steel, and then um, Batman v Superman, then Wonder Woman, then Justice so League. This oh, is then compl- Suicide Squad's in there. Okay, and then Justice League, and then um, um, so Aquaman. This is completely separate. Completely, one hundred percent separate this is its own universe it doesn't exist within the burton universe not the snyder universe okay not anything else this is its so own self-contained they're creating story. their own thing and they're starting with joker not just starting that's just it that's just it we're just like i'm gonna make a joker movie. this is the movie yes yes okay. exactly this is the movie and that is so beautiful honestly i'm surprised that they gave money for that they gave i think it's 50 million and what I cannot believe we live in an age where fifty million <laughs> is like, oh, here you go. Yeah, here, and it make looks a little, li- little film. And it like the 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 beauty of the film, like like of the trailer of Joker, it looks small. And yeah, it, and I don't want to say cheap, but it looks. It doesn't look like it cost three hundred million dollars. Right. It looks like right. it, it looks like it cost that much. And it's just crazy because like that's how much like big budget movies used to cost fifty million. <laughs> right. <laughs> and now we're just like, eh, fifty million, whatever. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I think the tone is right. Mm-hmm. I think like everything that I'm seeing looks right to me. The cinematography, yeah. the color palette. Yes, yes. Oof, the browns. Yeah. Yeah. The deep, deep purples. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. Dark green. It's all <laughs> yes, yeah. The sunset, you know, like yeah, er, everything, everything. Now I know that a lot of people are going to maybe say, like, do we really need an origin story for the Joker? Yes, a lot of people are bringing that up. Um, how do you feel about that? I I say bring it on. I I've always been intrigued by origin stories. Uh, I think. I'm. I don't fault people for not specifically wanting an origin story for the Joker mm-hmm. because, uh, a lo- like the the greatness that is the Joker is um, kind of like the more from Titus, you know, like he is he's crazy, and no one knows his motivations. He just does evil things. Mm-hmm. It's very Shakespearean, mm-hmm. and so. Literally Shakespearean, like just to just to see what happens. Yeah, and yeah. that's and I think that's the beauty of the Joker is that he's crazy and he's a wild card. You have no idea what he's thinking or what he's going to do next. Well, and that also influences how Batman treats him because if you can kind of get to the root of why someone does something, then can't you possibly prevent it, right? Or correct it, or correct or it, figure right? Out what they're going to do next right. when you can figure out their motivations. Exactly. And so I totally get that, and I I, I feel the same way. To an extent, mm-hmm. because I feel like this kind of thinking was 
amplified in 2008. Definitely. Well, like, yeah, when you have the Joker saying, like, I'm this way because of this and I'm this way, there was no true story. It all was just made up. And, like, the second time he tells that story, you're like, oh, okay, yes, Yes. no, it's not because of his past or anything that's happened to him. It is because he doesn't care and he just wants to see as, you know, as, yeah. as Alfred said, the world burned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the first time we saw it together, um, I remember thinking, like, I remember when he says, like, do you want to know how I got these scars? I remember thinking, ugh, we don't need to know. Right. We don't need to know. They, don't explain it. Don't explain it. And then, he, he, like you said, they, he does that second time. I was just like, okay, that's cool. But it's weird. Of I always thought that was, looking back, I'm just like, why did I think that? Like, why was I so against figuring out where he came from when we've seen his origin so many times before? Right. Um, I think Nolan created a version of that character that was meticulously drawn out to the point of obfuscation where it was appetizing. And you didn't want to know about him because of like what, um, you know, like Gary Oldman said, he's just like, there's nothing in his pocket but knives and lint. All his all his right. clothes are custom. Custom, you know. Right. Like he's an enigma. You have no idea what's going it on. It takes so, away that identity that we think we can figure out. But Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, Todd Phillips' Joker, is not Heath Ledger's Joker. Right. It's not Nolan's Joker. It's a different Joker. It's 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 that is that is that origin story for that Joker. Right. Right. And that's why I'm okay with it because Mm -hmm. we got an origin story with the first cinematic version of Joker. We got an origin story. Mm -hmm. Like for like a third of the film, he's Jack Napier. Right. Right. So we we see him thrown in the vat of chemicals at Ace Chemicals. Mm -hmm. Boom. Origin story. 1989. That was 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And then. And everyone was okay with it at that time. Everything. (laughs) Yeah. And (laughs) also even like so many people. I don't understand this because. I'm not going to start ranting, but <laughs> are you sure? I am sure. <laughs> so many people say whenever Joker comes up in conversation, people say, "Oh, I wish Mark Hamill's Joker got more love." Do you? Because every single Joker conversation I've had or seen, he's brought up as people saying he's the best, and he deserves it. Mm-hmm. He deserves the attention. Um, but I feel like a lot of people say it just to make themselves feel cool because they're choosing the animated version as their favorite version, okay. which is fine if it is. But I feel like people use it as a card to say, like, I'm cooler than you because I'm doing something that's that's a little indie. <laughs> like, like, like th- they feel it's, it's like they're. But like, is it if everyone's enjoying it? Exactly. <laughs> that's what I'm saying is ridiculous about it is that everybody thinks that because it's true. Mark Hamill's Joker, like it was a genius interpretation. We've seen his origin story. Mark Hamill's Joker. We've seen multiple origin stories of Mark Hamill's Joker, which in itself is a part of the character because we saw uh, we saw a pre-Joker Mark Hamill in uh, Mask of the Phantasm, mm-hmm. and we also saw a different type of interpretation in uh, The Killing Joke, which mm-hmm. was animated right. and voiced by Mark Hamill. Mm-hmm. And so we've seen, and in the comic books, they have ton like they've had multiple origin stories over the years and even just recently a couple years ago when they rebooted it the the comic book universe uh, once again after the new 52 um they straight up said there are three jokers oh really yeah all with different backstories that exist in the universe in that one universe so like over time like kind of like picking up the mantle no not really it was it was it was weird i didn't really dig on that um like all within gotham mm -hmm. three jokers in gotham yeah it was weird. Okay. Um, I didn't really like that. Okay. Um, You'll have to explain that to me later. I, I don't fully understand it myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I fully, yeah. So like I could be getting something wrong. But I remember reading that issue going, what? Uh, but that's the thing is that like it's we have been inundated by this. So for people to say like I don't want an origin story, that's fine. But don't deny that there are so many. Right. Like this is not something new. <laughs> right. This is not novel. Right. Right. For me, I sometimes get a little fatigued by origin stories, I think, um, just because, like, how many times do I have to, like, see, you know, Bruce Wayne's parents die? The okay. pearls drop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I don't need that. Like, that was one of my biggest critiques of 
Batman v Superman. I was like, I don't need that. Like, let's move on. Mm -hmm. Like, I know who Batman is. I know who Uncle Ben is. Exactly. But with the Joker, because even though it's a, he's a super popular villain, I I I don't like. It, it's just interesting to see that backstory explored because it's a villain. Mm -hmm. I think, um, and I don't think we've seen it probably to the point of exhaustion. So for me, I'm I'm super excited and also to see a different interpretation. Um, so, like, I I do understand the idea of people saying, like, oh, I don't. Because, you know, as of right now, my favorite Joker interpretation for sure would be, um, you know, the Dark Knight. Heath Ledger. Yeah, Heath Ledger version, where we don't know so mm -hmm. much that it, like, ruins it, right? Like, I get that. But at the same time, I love the Joker character so much and the crazy that is that character that I'm like, let's see a different interpretation. Yeah. Let's, why not? Like, exactly. Why, why not? not? <laughs> why not have more of a good thing? <laughs> and I, that's what I really don't understand is that people feel like it's going to ruin something for them. If they know more about the Joker, then you just say, I don't like that version. Yeah, that's the thing. It's just a version. Like when I go and watch the dark Knight again for the 25th time, I'm not going to, like, after watching Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, I'm I'm not going to th be thinking to myself, oh, man, if only Heath Ledger's Joker could have made it work with Zazie Beetz. <laughs> no, it's not going to work that way. <laughs> right, it right. It doesn't work that way. It's a yeah. different movie. It's a yeah, different universe. Exactly. Like, I didn't particularly like, I think it was the Mask of the Phantasms version, was it? Yeah. Well, they didn't I, really go too much into Or was it, which one was the one where, like, he had a wife and... Oh, it was um, The Killing Joke. Okay. I didn't really like that, that no, interpretation of, I don't like... of his backstory. Like, I was just like, eh. Like, I didn't really like it. Um, I didn't like the Red Hood. I think that's what he's called, the Red Hood storyline, yeah, where he's, like, wearing yeah, that bullet yeah, on yeah, his yeah, head. Yeah, 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 Like, he had to really get money, either. right? Is that... Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that. Um but that doesn't mean that, like, every time I see the Joker, I'm like, oh, well, he messed up there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, man, it's too bad his wife died. Or, right. Like, you know, or, like, right. He, like, couldn't make it as a real comedian. You know, like. Right. No one's thinking that. No. no. So you're really just complaining to be complaining. <laughs> but whatever. You do you. <laughs> or you could just not see it. Right. And, I, and that's I fine, too. And I'm not saying that to be snide. I really am not. I'm, no. I am not saying that to be like, well, fine. Like, like, whenever I write a bad review for a TV show on the nerdpotty.com, like, there is some mouth breather who comes to me <laughs> and says, like, well, then don't watch it if you don't like it. I'm like, I watched the first episode. I'm reviewing the first episode. <laughs> you know, like, that kind of thing. I'm not doing that. Like, if you are so hardcore against knowing any kind of origin story, then don't, yeah. then don't go see it. Absolutely. And, and like, that's within your power mm -hmm. not to go see it. Again, I'm not trying to be snide. I'm not trying to be sassy. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> Like seriously, like okay, it's cool. Right. Like there's right. There, the, you still have the DCEU. Mm -hmm. You know, like you still have another Suicide Squad coming out. Um and yeah. other things. Yeah, <laughs> other things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I I think it's one of those things where it's your choice, right? I mm -hmm. mean in anything. Like you always have a choice to whether you want to explore that or not. Now here's the thing though. Um, just because we're talking about continuity and versioning and everything like that, I guess it could potentially potentially be possible for Joaquin Phoenix Joker to come up again because Matt Reeves's trilogy of Batman movies that's that's going to be shooting soon there's a rumor that it's going to take place in the 90s so if they start this process in the 80s with Joker then he could potentially like maybe depending on how well it goes exactly he could become the Joker in those upcoming films. he could be an older Joker kind of like a Jack Nicholson Joker right um in in that in that trilogy hmm. that's interesting yeah huh <laughs> <laughs> i wonder like yeah i wonder about that i'm okay if they don't do that because i i i like the idea of something being temporary i like the idea of just a one-off like mm -hmm. this is that story let's do that mm -hmm. and i want dc to do that more like the old days yeah yeah i get that and i i think that sometimes it would be refreshing in this way that like it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to like continue on in the franchise. Like, okay, this was the interpretation of Walking Phoenix as the Joker. Mm -hmm. End of story. 
and now moving on. Moving like, on. Yeah. yeah. I don't see Phoenix as being someone who would like, okay, I'll sign a seven picture deal. No, he doesn't feel like that, but who knows? I don't know. I don't, when they yeah. when they back up a dumb truck of money. Yeah, I don't know. To your front door, you're only human. Yeah, exactly. Uh yeah. So and Matt Reeves is uh Matt Reeves, the director of the rebooted Planet of the Apes franchise. Mm-hmm. Um he's saying all the right things. That's really good. He really is. He's saying all the right things about like going back to the detective roots. That's what we like. And like really focusing on that about about Batman being a detective, about figuring things mm-hmm. out. And also, um, I think they said that they want a younger Batman. Okay. Which is interesting. Yeah. Because we, we got one with Christian Bale mm-hmm. in Batman Begins. Um, so it's not like it's the first time that it's ever happened. Um, but how young? Yeah, I don't know. But- that That also concerns me, like... How young are we talking? I don't know. Well, I mean, because I mean, in, in the comics, oh, I, I, it's there's so many different versions in the right. comics, you Again, know, and everything like that. So depends on what you read. Right? Like the lore is that he's older than college aged. Okay, which is still young. Like if you want to go yeah, twenty two, yeah. Um, and Christian Bale was not twenty two. No, <laughs> <laughs> when Batman Begins came out, right? But we saw him as a younger person, right? You know, like when he got kicked out of college mm-hmm. and and everything like that. Um. But it's a. Uh, it makes you wonder because I don't. I don't want another Batman Begins. I get it. I would like to I just go. Like he's fine. Be I. It would be one hundred percent okay if he was young, and in the nineties and everything like that. But I. I liked what Batman eighty nine did, where it's just boom. He's Batman. Batman. Ex- yeah, Batman is Batman. And this was the first cinematic Batman, and it was boom. No origin story. There you go. Well, I mean, yeah. they got the flashbacks, and right, like right, that. right, right. But he was an established Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he, he had was to, like prove himself, and he was still mysterious to Gotham. Sure, but it wasn't like he was testing out his suit. He wasn't trying to. He wasn't digging out his cave, right? Um, and I loved Batman Begins for that, right? But it's you, weird. we've seen it, we've right? Seen it, yeah, it's going to be fifteen years. Yeah, when it, like by the time it comes out, Batman Begins was going to be fifteen years ago. Oh my gosh. That's I ins- feel old. That's insane, right? <laughs> yeah. And so we're talking really about like old. 15 years is too soon, guys. <laughs> Wait a good solid two decades before you get another origin. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, no, I I mean, again, like I think, I don't know, like, okay, so question since it's the 80th anniversary of, of Batman being mm-hmm. Batman. Um, when did you first fall in love with Batman? Uh, when did this love affair start for you, Tristan? What, <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my first um, was okay. I was Batman for Halloween. Mm-hmm. But why were you four Batman? times in a row? But why? I'm trying to I'm trying to think back because it was that far away. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> I think I was five. Okay. When I really fell in love with Batman, I was. It was. It was. Michael Keaton's Batman. Really? Yeah, I was born in 86 and um Batman 89 came out in 89. And now obviously I was too young to watch it then say. or to experience it, but my dad showed it to me at a young age. So too young. Young. <laughs> I was yeah, I just I was super I have very early memories watching that. We fast forward parts of Winnie the Pooh today for Ripley. <laughs> <laughs> so not on the same track. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, this was fast forwarded too. No, Batman. Yeah, Batman eighty nine was fast forwarded for me a, a great deal, a great deal. Uh, but I was I was super young when it came out, and so like it was that movie. I think it was probably when it probably kicked into high gear when Batman Returns came out, which I was not allowed to see. Okay, I wasn't allowed to see Batman Returns, but I was allowed to see Batman. Okay. And I remember um, watching the the Adam West TV show with my grandma and grandpa, but not really thinking anything of it. Yeah, well, it's a very different Batman. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, but even as a child, mm-hmm. I didn't really dig it. I was just kind of okay. like, oh, this is goofy, it's fun, it's colorful, whatever. Uh-huh. But when I saw Michael Keaton's Batman, I was like, okay, mm-hmm. wow, like this is this is my Batman. Okay. And like when Batman Returns came out. They started, you know, they 
were promoting it heavily. There was a lot of toys. There was a lot of tie-in stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, Taco Bell, Ma- McDonald's all had that kind of advertising. And so that kind of swept me in. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? And dad's like, oh, well, this is the sequel to the Jack Nicholson one. Let's watch that. And so, yeah, I think that's when, yes, when Batman Returns okay. came out. Okay. Like a couple years after 89. Okay. So early 90s. So, yeah. So I was like five or six. Yeah. Okay. All right. That was that was the, whew, you know, like and and then like that's at the same time that's when um the animated series came out. Okay, and for for me the animated series. I was going to ask you. Yeah, what, like, was yeah. That, was that for you? Yeah, for me the animated series was when I I started liking Batman. And what about it? Like kind of. Uh the darker tone, um, the female villains. Oh yeah. <laughs> Poison. I thought idea. they were cool. Yeah. Woman. Yeah. Exactly. Um. I just thought he was like a really neat and just brooding and mysterious. And so I really liked that. I, I really liked the animated series a lot. Like I always tried to catch it. Um, I'm a little embarrassed to say that I also, I was young. Don't, don't judge me too harshly. Um, I, when I didn't watch any of the Michael Keaton, I didn't watch any of the Tim Burton ones. Like I, I think it was too scary at the time. Right. Um, but we did watch, Batman and Robin and it had such a bad movie but I really liked it at the time when I was a kid. Did I know this? <laughs> no, I did watch it and I liked it at the did, time. Did I know I don't this know. about you? I don't know. Like I like I didn't I did like it. I will admit I really did like it. And um then obviously like after that I realized it was terrible, but well, that's the story of so many childhood well, movies. Yeah, of course. Like I just liked the idea of Batman, right? And it can see it like continued. I didn't see any of the other ones, um, but then for sure the solidification would be, you know, the Dark Knight trilogy that mm-hmm. Batman, you know, begins and everything like that. Yeah, when uh, uh when Batman Forever came out. Like, obviously, because it was directed by Schumacher, it was a very different film from Batman and Batman Returns. But I never, even though I wasn't allowed to watch Batman Returns, once I actually watched it, I was like, oh, this is garbage. <laughs> like, I, I don't, I don't, I still don't <laughs> like it. Like, I'll watch it sometimes just because it's Keaton's Batman. Mm-hmm. And I love Keaton's Batman and Michelle Pfeiffer's amazing. But, oh, Danny DeVito and just blah, 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 blah. But when Batman Forever came out, I kind of reconnected with it. I was just like, oh, this is cool. This is nothing like Batman 89, but that's okay Mm -hmm. because to me, it was, it wasn't the same Batman, Mm -hmm. even though it's technically supposed to be. Right. I still, I think of it as Burton and Schumacher. Yeah. It's easy to see like, okay, they're different. Yeah. And so I, I love, I still do. I still love Val Kilmer as Batman. I really do. (laughs) Judge me all you want. I don't care. I love Val Kilmer as, as Batman. I thought it was great. I thought Chris O'Donnell was fine and. And, um, oh, my gosh, I love Nicole Kidman. Ooh, that hit me at the right age. And, <laughs> um, yeah, I just, like, I, to this day, I think Batman Forever is a good movie. It's goofy. It's hokey. Yeah. It's over the top. It's, it's neon. Uh, but <laughs> Batman and Robin. It's horrible. I just. It is garbage. I couldn't. I could not get behind that. <laughs> it, it was. Okay. So, I think what it was was, like, it was, again, at the right age that I was, like, allowed to watch that one mm-hmm. because, of the timing, I think, that it came out. And I remember my brother being really scared for some reason. And I think... <laughs> That's hilarious. I know. Um, but I think it was... Maybe I just felt cool because I wasn't scared of it. <laughs> yeah, That's I sat sounds, through Batman and Robin it's, it's and right. didn't close my eyes once, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm pretty hardcore. I also was four years older. So, again, not so cool. But... I think it was just the idea of like, okay, there's a bat cave and like just the things I had seen in the animated. Like it was just like, again, if you think about it though, I don't think I really had seen that many superhero films at that point, to be honest with you. Well, not a lot came out by then. Right? Not a lot came out. You had the Superman films and- and I kind of think that was kind of the deal was like, oh, this was one of the first like live action ones I'd actually been able to see. Mm -hmm. (laughs) To be honest. And the, the animated series is directly influenced by the first, by the Michael Keaton 1989. So much that mm-hmm. the theme song is the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what's really interesting is that like Kevin Conroy was the first actor to have a dual personality 
and dual voice of Batman. Because like in Batman eighty nine, Michael Keaton just kind of just kind of whispers. He's like, oh, "Joker's psychotic," you know, like that kind of thing. <laughs> so he's not really changing his voice; he's just whispering. Right. But Kevin Conroy, like in the first episode, it's just like. Like when he's talking to Batman, he's just like it's all gravelly. He's like, "Yes, Alfred, let come over here. Like, please bring me some tea." And then he like he picks up the phone. He's like, "Hey, how's it going? I'm Bruce Wayne. You know, like that's right. That's him. Yeah, that was his decision. Yeah. And now everybody does that. Exactly. They have a Batman voice and a Bruce Wayne voice. Yeah. <laughs> and like it's just crazy. Except how- for George Clooney did not. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> he was just George Clooney. Let's be honest. <laughs> like even Val Kilmer kind of like took it on the low key. Like he was just like he changed nope. his voice just a little bit. Just but George, George Clooney, Clooney was just George Clooney. Man, the first time you see him <laughs> and he pops in, he's like, hi, Freeze. I'm Batman. <laughs> you're like, no, you're not. Ooh, no, you're not, George. No, you're not. You're picking up a paycheck. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so embarrassed that that was one of my... Yeah, that was one of the things that I did like it, though. (laughs) I No, to this day, like, not that long ago, we did a marathon, Mm -hmm. and we're going to do it again because they're coming out in 4K, (laughs) just so you know, (laughs) FYI. Put it on the calendar. The original Batman films, yeah, are coming out in 4K either this spring or summer, most likely summer, and um, I've already bought them, pre-ordered them, and uh, it's, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> just telling everyone they're watching them. Just telling everyone they're watching. <laughs> uh, no, like no, like when we we went back and rewatched them, um, I was like, okay, we got to be hardcore about this. Yeah, we can't. We're we not going to skip anything. We have to go through. We got to go through I all think of them. We started with Batman and then ended with Dark Knight Rises, mm-hmm. and with like Returns and Forever and Batman and Robin in there. And while you're watching Batman and Robin, it's one of those movies where you're just like, oh, man, this is crazy. It's entertaining, though, because it it's is. so crazy. It's, it's like a fun watch like late at night. And I'm pretty sure we always end up doing that one late at night mm-hmm. and just kind of making fun of it the whole time. <laughs> so 80th anniversary, what did you think of Batman Begins when it first came out? Like when you first saw the trailer or when Christian Bale was announced, you know, like were you tapped in by then? I don't think I necessarily was, honestly. Like I I was excited to go and see it, but I don't think it really like solidified 100% until The Dark Knight. And then I was just like 100% in. I was wide-eyed like i was really into it. yes when because i was it came out in 2005 and i think the trailer came out in 2004 i could be wrong but i remember downloading the trailer online and that was new like that was new for me okay downloading a trailer online like it wasn't the it wasn't like one of the first to do it but like it was still novel Mm -hmm. enough that it was interesting and i remember waiting forever because back then you could choose if you could download it in an sd 720 or 1080 right, right. and i waited <laughs> like three hours to download the 1080 version <laughs> just so i could get it in pristine quality i didn't even have a 1080 monitor <laughs> um and so i remember watching it for and i i didn't really know too much about chris nolan you know okay. at that time he did um and this was in 2005, you said? This was in 2005, or like 2004 when the trailer came out, okay. I can't remember. But like at that time, he did Insomnia, he did uh, Memento, and I really liked Memento, mm-hmm. but I didn't like Insomnia, so I was just kind of like, okay, I don't, like, I, I don't, I, right. he wasn't worshipped as he is today. Right. Um, but I, that, that opening shot of Christian Bale walking through the mountains, not wearing a suit, you mm-hmm. know, like just mm-hmm. dressed up in rags. Yeah. Just that got me right there i was just like this is going to be different Mm -hmm. this is going to be good this is going to be a movie yeah i think that that was one impression i had from batman begins too was like okay this is not typical like they're going in a different direction and they're telling a different story and i feel like that's kind of where i'm feeling with the joker movie as well like okay it's original it's something that we haven't explored in this way. In this way. Right. Yeah. Like, we know the character, but let's see it in a different way. And going back to Joker, one thing that I'm really enjoying is that in the trailer, you see him with his mom. He's taking care of his mom. Mm-hmm. He's bathing his mom. So right. So, clearly, 
it is a, a situation where she can't take care of herself. But then at the same time, he has a mental illness that he's, you see him writing about it. And actually someone freeze framed it and said, the problem with having a mental illness is that people expect you to behave like you don't have one. That's deep. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty powerful stuff. And so the fact that he has to, he himself has a disability and he has to take care of somebody in his life who also has disabilities that we don't know about yet. Or I kind of, I could be completely off. I kind of took it as, is this kind of like a psycho situation where like there's an odd relationship with the mother, like a controlling relationship with the mother? Like I kind of took it that way where maybe his mother has this hold on him and that's also like part of it. I took it as he's very attached to his mother because because he needed more looking after growing up or as an adult because of his illness that he has a special bond with his mother because she felt like she had to take care of him longer in life and now that she's sick he has to take care of her and return the favor and when he when she, i'm i'm expecting her to die mm -hmm. so when she dies that's what helps push him over the edge okay that's how i took it so like they have a good relationship okay because, I could be completely, well, but that's, that's, maybe it's just, oh, no, 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 like neither, yeah. no, I mean, we don't know, right? Like neither of us could be, could be right or you could be right or I could be right. That's the beauty of it. This is just a teaser trailer. Right. But like in the trailer, they kind of show that they have a good relationship. Like when he's bathing her and then like throws water on her face and she's smiling and then they're dancing in front of the TV. See, I took that completely really? opposite. I did not take that as a loving relationship. I took it as like a, things might be a little not not quite right <laughs> i did i did i don't know well you are i don't know why you are a much bigger hitchcock fan than i am yes and you really like psycho yes and i don't really like psycho <laughs> i don't know i took it i just took it as like the way they were dancing didn't seem like a cute like dancing really? no i didn't take it that way at all i took it as wholesome totally really yeah i didn't take it that way at all yeah. i took it as like Things are not quite right. <laughs> like in what way? Like some a way that you don't want to talk about? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Ew. I don't think it was saying that at all. I just that's how I took it, and I could be completely wrong, and maybe my mind is just completely I, worked. I but think like you are completely wrong. <laughs> okay, we'll find out. <laughs> we will find out. But that's how I took it. I'm hoping I'm right. F very much so. <laughs> so. I don't want to see anything like that, or even illusions. Well, I'm sorry to put that on your head. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's because I think the there's two great there's multiples, but there's two there's two great Joker quotes from two different franchises, and there's one from The Killing Joke where, like, all it I, I'm going to butcher it, but it's um all it takes is one bad day to make the sanest man go mad. Mm. And then you have the Dark Knight where he's, where the Joker says, madness, as you know, is like gravity. All it takes is one little push. And those, I feel like, are sister quotes where it just shows you it's alluding to the fact that that's how the Joker fell. One bad day. Now, the Joker with Joaquin Phoenix is showing a man who's struggling. It's not just one bad day. Right. Like right. He, he's struggling. He's being pushed. But one bad day incident could push someone who's near the edge and off. My money is on his mother dying. Okay. That's my money. Okay. And I have no idea how Zazie Beats is going to work into it. But they're at a diner together. She is 27 years old. He is. <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix is 45 years old. <laughs> Come on. I love Zazie Beats, but couldn't we found a more age appropriate person if they are going to go the love interest? Maybe they're just friends. I don't know. Or maybe it's, again, like, I don't, maybe we saw different trailers. And I, I mean, we both enjoyed the trailer and think it's going the right direction. But I kind of felt like it, maybe it's like the, like for him, he's, he's not quite right. Well, and yes, I, I saw that Okay, trailer. I'm, I'm glad. Um, <laughs> But like maybe this girl is nice to him and he's misinterpreting. You know what I'm saying? Like well, that's quite very possible. Or, yeah, yeah. you know, maybe so maybe like it's not like a relationship. It's more of like 
he sees someone who's kind to him, but maybe, and then maybe it won't like, it'll backfire in some way. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm interested in seeing that. Like, I'm interested, like, I wonder, you know, if this movie will say anything, Mm. you know? Yeah. If it'll say, hopefully, hopefully in this day and age, you know, like, cause I feel like some people are a little worried and you know and honestly they have they have a reason to be worried about another movie painting people um who are who have a a mental illness or a mental disability or you know some sort who are not neurotypical Mm -hmm. um with a broad brush Mm -hmm. and a negative brush Mm -hmm. where like somebody will see that and go like oh well i mean if you have a mental illness and you're guess you're crazy or if you're not neurotypical or if you're atypical, then right. you must be crazy or dangerous right. and psychotic. Right. You know, I'm able to see these movies and not think that. Mm-hmm. Be- like, I'm able to do that, but not everybody is. And so could that, that be detrimental to people who are living in that in, in that realm of society and, and with disabilities like that and with illnesses like that? And so I'm hoping that they will find a way to balance that in 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, without hurting the story and not treating it with kid gloves. and But at the same time, because we're living in 2019, I wonder if this will have something to say about whether it's socioeconomic status, racial status, um, urban status, mental health in the United States and how it's, it's shunned or how you know, mm-hmm. like you're just, especially in the 80s, oh my God, the early 80s where... Um, you know, like if, if you had anything mm-hmm. that was atypical, then you were considered crazy and psychotic. And maybe that's what pushes him over the edge because he's being ignored. Who knows? Mm-hmm. I'm just wondering if it'll say something or if it's I, hopefully it will, because I feel like those are the movies that definitely impact more instead of just the Yeah, this guy went crazy and then he started murdering people. Right. Right. I think like even from what you like, because we free frame like the journal or whatever. Mm-hmm. And even like the quote that you said, like was on there about like mental health and how. Um, people expect you not to act, you know, a certain way or whatnot. I, I feel like even in that self, having that even there, I feel like it has to say something. Yeah. I don't think that it wouldn't just be this story. Um, and yet at the same time, like you said, I think it's, it's just, I mean, we're not just talking about someone random. We're talking about the Joker. Right. So I think you have to allow some, like it's okay that he is going to go crazy because that's the story that we want to see, and that's the joke. Right, he is psychotic. Right, right. He's a psycho, but still killer. acknowledging like that not everyone will become this way. Obviously, right. like not everybody who has psychosis or suffering some psychosis, right, will be violent. You know, right. everything like yeah. that. And so, yes, I'm. I'm hope. Uh, hopefully, they will take those steps mm-hmm. to safeguard that, or at least not paint with a broad brush. Right. Um, and, and maybe, Hey, it'll say something like with what you're saying with Zazie beats, like Zazie beats is nice to him Mm -hmm. and in stereotypical male fashion because she's nice. That happens a lot as a female. Absolutely. Like you have a million stories like that. Yeah. And I know I have tons of other friends who have a a million stories just like it Mm -hmm. where just because a woman is nice to you. Then all of a sudden she owes you something or you think it's it's something that it's not. And then when she rejects you, you, you go off the deep end. You know, right. Like it right. Could, so like we could have a comment on how mental illness is, is ignored. Mm-hmm. We could have a comment on how um, on to- toxic masculinity. You know, we could have so many comments on this and where and a- another um, argument like some people are making is I don't want to feel sorry for the Joker. Like I don't want to oh. empathize with the Joker and understand and everything like that. And I feel like there's going to be some empathy. Yeah, I mean, already in the trailer, I've felt some empathy yeah. Too, for him. Yeah, but you can have empathy for a character, but still recognize that they're making the wrong decisions. Yeah, absolutely, and see the path. Like, right? Okay, they should have turned right, but they went left. I kind of liken it to Walter White. Mm. Where you empathize with Walter mm-hmm. White and you you understand and understand what he's going through. But then you're just like, oh, you're making a whole bunch of wrong decisions. Like right. you are becoming the villain 
I don't feel sorry for you. I understand where you're coming from and I'm pseudo rooting for you because you're the protagonist, but you are the villain here. Exactly. And I think that's a fine line. I think mm-hmm. that that's why Breaking Bad works so much in that way is that you started off feeling bad and then you slowly became like, no, he deserves everything that comes to him. Yeah. But at the same time, you want to see that story because like you said, this is what you want. This is what you came for. <laughs> right. And so it can be done. Mm-hmm. Everything that we just described can be done appropriately. Absolutely. Will they? Who knows? We don't know. We don't know. It could, it could fail miserably. It could be a it could be a terrible movie with great trailers. Just watch Suicide Squad. You know. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I hope that they don't show too much. I hope that we get this teaser. We have this teaser trailer, and then we get one mm-hmm. more trailer, and then that's it. Like Endgame. Like Endgame. Oh, that's that's an extreme example. <laughs> um, maybe a little bit more than that. <laughs> um, but yeah, something in that vein. So yeah. All right. Well, we talked a long. It kind of became more Joker than Batman. I'm like a lot. We we set out. <laughs> yeah. We, we said like as we were talking about this episode, like well, let's just talk about the the Joker trailer at the top, but then we'll just kind of transition <laughs> to 80th anniversary Batman. No. Nope. It was more like 90 percent Joker, 10 percent Batman. It's so, true. It's true. As you could tell, we are excited for this film. <laughs> um, so please check out our backlog by going to the nerdparty.com. Yeah. Write us a review. If you uh, like what we do, and uh, if you give us a five-star review, we'll mention you on the show. Uh, write to us. Let us know what you think. Uh, give us some show topics if you want us to talk about anything in particular. Uh, we love getting feedback, and we love getting letters from you guys. Yeah. And uh, we really do appreciate those people who write us regularly. Absolutely. And uh, contact us regularly. Yeah, and we have lots of other shows you can check out on the network as well. Absolutely. So, yeah. We have, um, we have, so many, we have a Harry Potter show. We have... Multiple Star Wars shows, multiple Star Trek shows. We got a a, a Doctor Who show and uh, so many other that I'm forgetting right now. (laughs) Um, But go to thenerdparty.com. There's something for everyone. It really is great. And uh, speaking of Endgame, I cannot cannot wait until we get to April 25th. Yes, we have have tickets. We have tickets for AMC, Dolby showing, first showing, (laughs) Thursday night. It's going to be great. Yeah, we're excited. We are (laughs) excited. So thank you guys so much for listening. I love you. I know. Scully? Yes? Marry me. I love you and I like you. I love you and I like you. I love that woman. I love her more than sharks love blood. (laughs) 